Exodus chapter 11 verses from 4 till 8. Let's all read together. Then Moses said, Thus says the Lord, About midnight I will go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the animals, and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as what was not like it before, nor shall be like it again. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue against man or beast, that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And all this your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me, saying, Get out and all the people who follow you. After that I will go out. Then he went from Pharaoh in great anger. Let's all close our eyes, our dear Heavenly Father. We come before thy altar. We come before thy throne to receive your words and Lord, your guidance in our lives. We are a simple soul. We do not, we cannot do anything without your guidance, without your words of Father God. These people who are here, they have humbled themselves and they are before you standing, requesting your words of Father God. Open their eyes so, they, so that they might see your vision, O oh God. They open, their, open their ears so that they might hear what you want to speak to them. Open their hearts, Lord, so that they, the words which is, going, which, which, which is spoken here, let it, let it be sown in the hearts of these people, O oh Father God. Dear Lord, I humble myself before you. Take control. You speak, O oh Father God, because, because without your words, we may get lost. We will get lost. So help us and guide us and, and, and speak to everyone from young, small kids to the old people in this place, O oh Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Exodus chapter 11, verse 7. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue against man or beast that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. May God bless us all. Last two weeks, we've been going through a different kind of portion from the Bible. The week before, last week, we learned how to embrace, you know, loneliness. In Christian people's life, loneliness is much, much, very much important because being lonely takes you much closer to the heavenly God. When you're lonely, when you, when you keep yourself, when you separate or segregate, when you consecrate yourself from the people around you, you, we Christians, we have this thought of getting connected to God as Jacob did. So, embracing loneliness and last week we saw how important is to embrace silence in our lives many times we have to embrace silence before the enemy many times we have to embrace silence when God does something in your life these two important things embracing loneliness embracing silence keeps you good safe and secured in your life. So, embracing loneliness, embracing silence, why it is much important? Can't you, you can ask this question, Pastor, can't we explain ourselves to this world? You might ask this question, Pastor, why can't I go and mingle around with these worldly people and why can't I show God's love to these people? Why can't I go and explain God's love to those people? Many people will say, Pastor, I am in kind of friendship or in relationship with such person who is not a Christian. And I'm, I'm sure that I can, after marriage, I can change that person into Christianity. People would say it. I can explain how great God we serve to those people. Now, these people say it like this, Pastor, I can explain. I can convince. Leave me. I have to go into this world. And I have to explain and I have to say, you know, when people ask, Pastor, when I say about these things, how can you ask us to embrace silence? Don't we have to talk? Yes, we have to talk. Don't we have to explain? 
Yes, certain times you will have to explain. But what? What is wrong in it? What? We have to be cautious about it. Because there is always a difference between godly people and ungodly people. Why you cannot explain yourself to other people? Because there is a difference. Why can't you prove yourself to the worldly people? Because there is a difference between you and those people. When you try to explain, they wouldn't understand. Why? Because there is a difference. This God you see, they cannot see. Why? There is a difference. So, this embracing silence and this embracing loneliness, it has to come next to certain thing and understanding a thing called that difference. Today I'm going to speak to you about that difference. Come on everybody say the difference. Acknowledging the difference. What kind of difference, difference it is? What different kind of difference we would have from the ungodly people? The differences. As we read in the Bible verse in Exodus chapter 11, verse 7 here says like this, But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue against man or beast, that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptians and the Israel. We do have a difference from the worldly people. And the difference was made by God. Dear brother, you are not the same as the ungodly people. You are different. You are, you are different. Your life is different. Your future is going to be different. Your family is different. All the people, all the people that, that, that are with you, they are completely different from the worldly people. Remember that. In all times, when the Israel people were slaved under the Egyptian people, God made a difference between the Egyptians and the Israel people. How? God brought 10 different kinds of plague to free the Israel people from Egypt. I would say it once again. God sent 10 different kind of, kind of plagues over the Egyptians to show, to bring out the Israel people out of the Egypt. In those 10 different kinds of plagues, God proved and showed there was a difference between godly people and the Egyptians. The difference between the Israel and the Egyptian. This is what God said, says here in the 10th plague. The 10th plague was the destruction or the death of the firstborn. This is what said in the Bible, the death of the firstborn. God announced it. God announced that if Pharaoh, if you are not going to send the Israel people out of Egypt, I am going to send this last and final, you know, dangerous plague in your, in your place, in Egypt, in your country that no one has ever seen before. And this plague is going to show a difference between you, your people, the Egyptian people and my people. So God sent this plague around the Egyptian country and what happened? The Israel people, they were saved, they were kept safe, but on the other side, the Egyptian people, they had to face this plague. God said, through this plague, I will show a difference between godly people and ungodly people. If you could see in Exodus chapter 8, verse 23, I will read it for you. The Bible says, I will make a difference between my people and your people. Tomorrow, this shine shall be. God said, I will send a sign. What kind of sign? The Bible says, God sent swarms of flies around the Egypt. And through that sign, God made a difference between the Israel men and the Egyptian people. The, just the people. Come on, everybody say people. God showed a difference between Egyptian people and the, and the Israel people. Here God said, I will, I'm going to show a difference between my people and your people. That was the difference. So when the swarm of flies came, you know, it went or the flies went and affected only Pharaoh's people. But the people of God, the, the Israel people, they were kept safe. That is how God showed a difference. Not only among the people, but also among the cattle of Egyptian people and the Israel people. Not only the people, not only the human beings. You know, even our cattle, even every living things we have, every non-living things ha we have, we possess in our hand, it has a different value from the worldly things. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything that you possess, 
It has a different value, brother. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 9, verse 4, it says, And the Lord will make a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. See? So nothing shall die of all that belongs to the children of Israel. See how much God cares for you. See how much God respects you. See how much God has given value to you and your family. Not only to you and not your family. Everything that belongs to you, God has made it precious. Amen. Hallelujah. The vehicle you have, God has made a difference between the vehicle that's outside in this world. Even your car, it, that God makes it a different from the worldly thing. Amen. Hallelujah. What, do you, what you value, God values it too. Amen. Turn to your next person and say, what you value, God values it too. Come on, say it. What do you value, God values it too. So God says, God always wanted to prove that there is a difference between the worldly people and God's people. And that is why, you know, Jesus, God wanted to explain this to the Egyptian people. What difference it made during all those plagues, especially in the last plague in which you know, the, Is the Israel people came out of Egypt, the last plague. Now, what made the difference? What makes the difference? You know, what is, what is marking a difference be between you and the worldly people? Just listen to this very carefully. What makes the difference? Your appointment makes the difference. Your appointment. The Israel people, the Bible says, God called them His people. You know, those people, His people. God said, they are my people, God said. You know, that was the appointment that the Israel people received from God. God said, they are my people. That was the difference, the appointment. What makes you special, dear brother? The appointment of God towards you makes you special. Do you know in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, the Bible says, For we are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. There are many people in this world, but there are few selected people of God who are called as the sons of God. Everyone who have faith in Jesus Christ, they are the sons and daughters of God. Come on, put your hands up and shout Amen if you believe that. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have this faith in Christ Jesus, that's what the Bible says. For we are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. If you have faith in Christ, you are a son of God, you are a daughter of God. And this appointment, it brings a difference between you and the worldly people. You might say, Pastor, we are same. Same blood, you know, same blood runs through me. And also, you know, to somebody who might be a relative to you, but who may not be a God's child, who may not be a saved Christian. You might say, Pastor, we look the same. Yeah, but there is a difference, brother. The difference is your appointment is different. Their appointment is different. Your calling is different. Their calling is different. And I would say, they are not called to be the son and daughters of God. But we are called to the son and... You know, we are called to be the son and daughter. Hallelujah. Through the faith we have in Jesus Christ. So what made the difference between the Egyptian people and the Israel people? The Israel people were appointment, appointed to be the people of God as like we are appointed to become the child or the son and daughter of God that is the difference and there was there is a second difference also what makes the difference you know the sign on the Israel people when the last plague came and the destroyer was walking around you know walking on the street the Bible says the destroyer saw the blood that's what that was marked as a sign on those, you know, every doors, you know, those Israel people, they mark the sign with the blood of the lamb. Bas Passover lamb, and they mark the sign with the blood. And when the destroyer saw this, you know, when the destroyer saw this blood, he just would pass those houses without, you know, without killing any firstborn in that house. So what made the difference? The blood marking on the houses that made the difference. So every house without that blood marking, of the Passover lamb, you know, the destroyer went in and he destroyed firstborn among every people in human being and also in the livestock. That's what the Bible said. The first I said, the difference between you and other people is your appointment, your calling. 
your calling god goes god has called you to be his son and that is why you are here and that is why those people are outside some church they are not in the church and they are not called they are not appointed that appointment makes and brings the difference in you and other people you have to realize there is a difference that's why in the heading i said you know acknowledging the difference you have to acknowledge the difference you are not same from those people in other words another thing that makes a difference is the blood marking do you know when we have accepted christ when you have taken baptism when you have accepted jesus christ as a personal savior his blood the blood of jesus christ which he has you know given which which was poured down from the cross it has been made a mark on our foreheads do you know that do you believe that can you see that can you see that in your family can you see that in your forehead can you see that in your children's head because that blood of jesus christ is a difference that makes a difference those people who do not understand who god is those people who do not acknowledge what jesus christ can do in their life you know they do not have this jesus christ's blood as a sign but we as a child of god that is why we emphasize on getting baptism when we are get baptized it means god is marking you with his blood when you are when you are baptized it means god has selected you to be his sons and daughters so this two difference one is the appointment come on everybody say with me the appointment the second is the sign say it the blood sign that you have on your family on your things on your possessions on your house on your livestock whatever it is the the sign which says you and i we belong to christ jesus that brings a difference between you and the worldly people do you know god is very oh very you know very careful in teaching us this difference how in ezekiel chapter 44 verse 23 you can see and read it like this Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 23 it says like this and they shall teach my people who the priest the bible says listen to me just look look over here the priest has to teach the people what they have to teach now and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the unholy and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean the holy and the unholy clean and the unclean the priest responsibility is to teach those things in other words in second corinthians paul also says like this in second corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 the bible i'll read it for you do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness listen to this dear brother what fellowship righteous with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness when a christian and a non believer of jesus christ i'm not talking about religion i'm talking about belief a believer of jesus christ and a non believer of jesus christ has a way lot difference between each other if they are tied up in certain things if you connect yourself with an unbeliever if you can connect yourself with an you know those people who do not accept christ as their savior those if you connect yourself in business you know in your works in your marriage life in whatever it is if you connect yourself with an unbeliever the bible calls it it as it is unequally yoked unequally yoked you are not equally yoked with them now when you are getting connected with somebody in a marriage who are not accept who have not accepted christ as their savior who's an unbeliever if you have accepted you know if you are getting connected with somebody in business as a partner the bible it, it it is so sure that you are unequally yoked what happens when you are unequally yoked if you could see this picture here you know two different kind of things life start getting yoked together one is a bull you can call it and another is a donkey you could see this and you can say those both things are unequally yoked you know because that that bull can walk as far as possible that bull is strong it can pull a lot that bull is different and the donkey is different you know they both the both those are unequally yoked they are not equally yoked sometimes we are we are trying to you know get us connected with worldly people and the next moment what happens 
day by day after it goes and after it passes they won't believe God but you still will believe God that that will bring an imbalance in your life God cannot bless both of you God even God, if God wanted to bless you as you have unequally yoked yourself with some lawlessness some darkness God cannot bless you because those darkness will drag you I want to say this to you dear brother accept and acknowledge this difference in your life because the lawlessness the lawless people Jesus less people unfaithful people those people who do not trust Jesus Christ they will drag you down you cannot get yoked with them they will pull you down yeah you can you can be with them and work with them but don't get yoked with them don't get connected with them don't get your life too much involved in with them come on say too much involved is that right too much involved I seen many people good spiritual people getting connected with those unbelievers I'm not against anyone but I, I am I am I am not okay with those people who do not accept Christ as their Savior I'm not against any people of this world but I'm not okay with those people who do not believe my Jesus Christ amen hallelujah I do not believe anyone who doesn't believe my Jesus Christ because there is a difference God wants to show you the difference Dear friends of God, dear people of God, young people, do not get yourself yoked with an unbeliever and don't get yourself dragged. You are in a war, you are in a, in a, in a, in a, you are in a race towards the heaven. Those things that unbelievers will drag you down. That is a difference. God wants, to, God wants you to acknowledge the different. You cannot explain yourself to those people. So when it comes to the difference, what are the difference that can be expected now I said what brings the difference first the two things one is the appointment second is our our sign the sign on our forehead it says we belong to God so those two differences those two things the appointment and the sign of God it brings the difference between a godly and ungodly people so following that what kind of difference you could expect from a godly person and an ungodly person what kind of difference you have to know the difference so that you can keep yourself away from those who do not believe Jesus Christ Bible says we have to love everyone we have to love everyone as of our own yes that we are doing that we have to do but don't get yourself too much involved don't get yourself too much connected don't get yourself yoked with an, with, with an unbeliever if you don't start a business with a partner who doesn't believe in Christ you know it's gonna drag your business down it's gonna drag your life down it's gonna drag everything see what are the difference to be expected as a as a, between an believer and unbeliever one the first difference you can expect is the difference in foundations come on everybody say differences in foundation this is the first difference you can expect what does it mean in your near turn your Bible and read from Psalm 1 verses 3 and 4 come on everybody turn your Bible to Psalm 1 verse 3 and 4 read it with me and you know the verses he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall this verse this verse 3 it's about the believers of God the blessed people who doesn't walk in the counsel of ungodly people who delights in the law of the Lord so these godly people they will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water how many per persons here could assume yourself as the tree who are planted by the rivers of water put your hands up and shout hallelujah yes hallelujah you are a tree don't you you are a tree planted by the rivers of water a good living water that is Christ we are planted in near him we are planted in him that is the difference godly people but what about the ungodly wicked people the Bible says in verse 4 you can read it the ungodly are not so come on everybody say that word louder the ungodly are not so. saying not so. not so they are not like us the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind drives away know this you are a tree 
and the ungodly people they are just a chaff what makes the difference the tree it is deeply rooted but the chaff it flies away wherever the wind take them takes them what makes the difference the foundation makes the difference the tree are connected into the foundation into the soil into the land and you and i we are connected into jesus christ hallelujah Amen. and those people ungodly people they don't have this perfect foundation they don't have this jesus christ and that is why they move according to how the wind takes them they shake according to how the situation takes them corona cannot shake us because we are strongly enrooted in the love of christ and whatever comes whatever problems comes what whatever pandemic comes we still believe in our god hallelujah we will not be looking for a solution because we know our only solution is jesus christ but the ungodly people they will be looking for a solution that is why the bible calls them as chaff they will be here somewhere they will be come to this church and after they will not believe god they will go to the other church they will go to another church they will go to another church they will go to another church they will try some method and after that you know as the wind changes they will try another method other method other method they are easily driven by the satan because they are not enrooted in christ but to us christians godly people we have to say it very proudly we are godly people hallelujah because our foundation is jesus christ the bible says we have a foundation we have this rock and the rock is jesus christ hallelujah 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 that is the difference what is the difference you should expect you know as you have been appointed as you have the sign of blood of jesus christ on you you have to know you have a different foundation from those people in the world they will have worry they will have fear they will be roaming here and there bible says in the last days when they hear those news the ungodly people those who are not elected to the heaven when they hear the news of the war and everything that is going to happen they will run here and there that is the life of a chaff but we are strongly enrooted in christ hallelujah that is why paul says nothing can take me away from the love of christ hallelujah if you are a 10 years believer to the church you are 10 years enrooted in christ Amen. hallelujah i would say to you no one can take you away from christ because you are spread deep inside god's love hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah you can say no one can take me away from christ you know why because i am deeply rooted inside christ Amen. believe it or not even i cannot try do you think the tree can come out, come out like that no no as long as the root is in christ that is the best foundation say come on everybody say i have a different foundation that makes you proud amen hallelujah you should feel proud about that you should feel happy about that you should feel thankful about that god's grace amen hallelujah so what is the difference you can expect the difference in foundation our foundation is different ungodly people actually they don't they don't have a foundation a man bible the jesus talks about the parallel in which a man a wise man he built his house upon the rock and the rock is jesus christ and the house it stands another person ungodly person he builds his house upon the soil when the waves come when the when the strong wind came it fell down you know that is the difference first difference to be expected you know the difference in foundation i'll just rush and try to finish with another point dif- dif- second one everybody read with me numbers chapter 14 verse 24 just you can just you can look on to this television and you can read with me numbers chapter 14 verse 24 it says like this but my servant caleb because he has a different spirit in him has followed me fully and i will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it number 2 there is a difference between your spirit and ungodly person spirit no what is the difference come on everybody say difference in spirit say it first difference in foundation and the second one difference in spirit you have a different spirit what does it mean when god said about caleb the other 10 persons 
who, who, who didn't believe God, who didn't believe that God would take them to inside, no, take the Israel people inside Canaan. Those people came out, the Bible says, they said bad reports. Come on, everybody say that. What, what did they say? And God said, hey, you are bringing bad reports. You don't have the spirit I am expecting. But the Caleb, in spite of all those negative things, he brought a good report. He brought this faith in me. And that is why God said about Caleb, he said, he has a different spirit in him. That is the difference. The spirit of God which is in you, that makes the difference. The worldly people, they don't have that spirit. They have the spirit of fear. They have the spirit of, spirit of shame. They have the spirit of all this lawlessness. They have the spirit of the evil. But we, the people of God, we have the spirit of Jesus Christ in us. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the Holy Spirit. That makes the difference. That makes the difference. That makes the difference. How many of you have received Holy Spirit you know, in, in this church? Come on, put your hands up and, and, and show me if you have received the anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have received the anointing, that brings a much greater difference in you. A spirit mill filled man of God, it's much, much more different from this world. You have to understand. Your spirit will say something and the worldly spirit, they will not trust it. They will not yield to, yield to it. An ungodly person will never trust a godly person. Amen. No, don't expect the worldly people to trust you. Why? There is a difference. I just want to conclude this. You have to understand, this is what I have to say to you. You are different from the worldly people. Don't expect their love. Don't expect their understanding. They cannot understand you. Amen. They cannot help you. Because they are in fear. How do you expect them to help you? You know, I'll just, just, do you remember these words which I spoke uh, weeks earlier. When Jesus spoke to the people, he spoke in parables. And when he came to the disciple, he explained to them. Do you, do, you, do you remember the words I spoke? Yes. What's the difference? Those people, Jesus used parables because they will not understand. But these disciples who were closer to Jesus Christ, he completely explained everything to them when they were alone. Because they are different and those Gentiles are different. You are different, the people who spend much time with Christ, you are different and those people in the world, they are different. Jesus knew, even if he explained those things to the Gentiles, they would never understand. Because that is the difference, dear brother. That is the difference. The same verse which I am speaking to you right now, if an ungodly person hears it, he will not believe it. He will not understand it. He will just make fun of it. But we, the people of God, we know the important value in this book. Hallelujah. That is the word of God. So know this. You have a difference. You cannot try to accompany, accompany or you, can, you, cannot, you cannot try to yoke yourself. You cannot try to get yourself connected with an ungodly person. First, because... They can never understand you. What is the use of you trying to explain to somebody who doesn't understand you? The person who can understand you right is those persons who understand Jesus Christ. Amen. The person next to you, sitting next to you, the person in the church, they understand Jesus Christ. So they will surely understand you. How many of you get what I saw what I'm saying here? Yes. You cannot go out to this world and try to explain yourself to some friend. You cannot explain the situation of your life or your family or some case or something. You cannot explain to them and you cannot try to ask their guidance because they never understand your ways. They will, they will never understand godly ways. They will never understand what God wants us in our life. That is a difference. Realize this. Acknowledge the difference and live a, you know, a live a life in which you and your God alone are important. Hallelujah. Yes, we love everyone. Yes, we embrace everyone to come to the church. Yes, we need everyone to understand who Jesus Christ is. And we want everyone to know the value of Jesus Christ. But you 
and I, we are different from the worldly people. And any harm that comes to this world, it will not harm us because we are different. We have this mark on us, that is the mark of the blood of Christ on us. Amen. Hallelujah. When you hear the news, when you hear something happening around us, don't involve yourself. Don't get yourself entangled in this world. That's why the Bible says, those people on their own, they, they, they expect things to happen to them. Though the things they covered in this world, those people, even sometimes godly people, we, when we try to covet worldly things, we get ourselves entangled in the world. Just know this, you are different. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all stand in your place and close your eyes and lift your heads. I know this is a very short sermon, but I have not ended it. But just close your eyes and look to heaven without any disturbance, dear brother. Without any disturbance, I just want you to feel this, this word of God. This word of God that came right to you. You are different from the world. You might be expecting, you might be expecting somebody to understand you. You might be expecting someone to help you. But if they don't understand God, if they don't understand Jesus Christ, how would you expect them to understand your godly ways? Many times in your life, you might feel that you are left alone. That is because you are different from those people. In your college, in your workplace, whether there are a hundred, you might be different. You might feel like you are the different odd person. Yes, you are a different odd person because your end is heaven. Amen. The Bible says their end, the unholy people's end, it's everlasting destruction. Their end is in the lake of fire. But ask the godly people who seek God. Now how can you know that you are a godly people? Because you are here in the church right now worshipping this true God. So I call you as a godly people. Yes. I call you as a godly people. I call you as a wonderful son and daughter of God. So you are different. And God is, you know, during these last days, you know, as the slavery of Israel people ended in Egypt, the last moments, the last days, God made a difference between Egyptian people and Israel people. No, we are in this world, end of days. We are gonna go to Canaan. We are gonna go to heaven soon. These last days, you have to believe, dear brother, sister, God will make a difference between His people and the worldly people. Believe it. Expect it. Believe it. And God brings you out, certain, out of certain situation. Don't feel ashamed that you're not... Don't feel ashamed that you're not... You cannot cope up with those worldly people. You cannot cope up with them because you have a different spirit in you. You cannot get along with those worldly people because your foundation is different. You're much stronger in Christ. How many of you here could believe and have faith and understand what God has for you? Can you feel the difference? Don't try to make you feel equal to this world. Don't try to make you feel equal with those ungodly people just close your eyes and lift your right hands towards the heaven and say I am different I am my God's own child I have a different foundation I have the foundation of I have Jesus as my foundation say I have a different spirit I have a different spirit Dear loving Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, God. Lord, we are different from this world. We cannot expect, we are not expecting to, to be blessed equal according to those Gentiles, oh Father God. But Lord, we are expecting blessing that you would give which is right in your eyes, which is good in your eyes, Lord. 
money is not important but your blessing is important there is a difference wealth is not important but god's peace is much important there is difference i'm god's child lord we are your child oh lord we are your children we are your children we are the chosen one we are the appointed bless each and every one here in this place oh father god help them to understand the difference help them to understand your calling in their lives help them to understand the unique sign we have apart from the worldly people lord help us to understand and realize it help us to understand the different foundations help us to understand the different spirit lord as you have said in the last days you will you will make a difference between the godly and ungodly people during those ten days oh god help us to be one among the godly people who serves you help us to be among the godly people let not wickedness come in the inside of our hearts oh father in jesus name we pray amen and amen hallelujah hallelujah say difference in foundation difference in spirit say difference in god's favor so did you say that difference in god's favor it's a difference in understanding it's a difference in and last difference in conclusion amen hallelujah five major differences do you want to know more you have the whole bible which proves the difference between you and those person who will not carry this bible hallelujah hallelujah